What's up everyone? Welcome back to K-Pop Insider. It's your girl Casper here to get down to the nitty gritty of K-Pop. Just like any other country, Korea has its own system of music charts that determine the stream counts and download counts of songs. Korea's system is sort of unique in nature in that there are multiple businesses with their own music charts and although similar, they have different ratings and value. Some of these charts include Melon, Genie, Bugs, Neighbor, and even Kakao. And previously, I know that Mnet had its own chart too. Also with the rise prominence of K-music and K-pop in overseas charts, Koreans have been very keen on looking into overseas chartings as well. This can be charts such as the Billboard charts or the Oricon charts, or it could even be K-Count 4 years album charts where you can see the direct sales and counts of albums. With every rating system comes competition, and fans and companies both try to really heighten up the stream counts on the moment of release. In efforts to increase efficiency, they could put in efforts such as promotional posts on Instagram, or other social media or fans promising a certain time to directly stream all together. Performance in these charts mean popularity and success so it's only natural that the fans and the companies both care a lot about this and once they become a steady seller within the charts they're considered popular or successful. So this sounds very good and natural and normal right? Wrong. Just like everything else in the world, the charts of Korea have been smothered with rumors and facades and skepticism of how certain groups or artists don't have the necessary fandom to explain their sudden exponential count in downloads and streams. And people assume that they have resorted to dishonorable ways of streaming such as paying brokers to set up phones to infinitely stream their songs. But none of these rumors have been actually proven and it is also reported that it's crazily expensive to actually do this like pay the brokers and infinitely stream their songs enough for them to actually have some sort of result in the charts. So it seems a little illogical that small companies would have the necessary funds to do this in the first place. Also, this Hajagi rumor is very pertinent when discussing big groups and big bands as well. There have been accusations in the past that companies buy a bunch of their CDs when they have their comebacks in order to perform well in music program shows. Hmm, let me know what you guys think about this, if you've heard of it or if you have any other further questions. Well, then what's the big deal in doing well on these charts? First of all, there's money. Coming first in a music chart for about a month's length would equate to something around Eok or Sama. Producer name, please write in the subtitles how much this would mean in USD. Also, this means more money to the artists and songwriters who sell physical copies of the album. So the rising interest in the song would equate to more sales of the albums, which means more Chojakbunyo and Umon Suik, which I don't know how to say it in English. Finally, there's an ultimate boost given to the song essentially because Korean cafes and restaurants tend to just play the top 100 songs of certain charts. Another thought, I'm not sure if you guys have actually thought about this, but do the artists themselves care a lot about the ratings, like whether or not they're in third place, second place, 15th place, whatnot? Yes, they do. Personally, I have K-pop idol friends who keep their phone by their bedside to see each hour how well their song's doing. I mean, K-pop idols are human too and it feels good to be rated well, right? It's kind of like getting back test results after a long period of testing or examination. When I think about music charts in Korea, I feel like they're very interested in the trend and what's trending now. So uh, if a certain reality show or if a certain YouTube channel hypes up one song really well for a certain amount of time, then suddenly you see a really random song pop up on the charts and I think that shows how well contents and media and songs are all just kind of meshed together um, into approaching the public. Also another reason why I think Korean music charts mean so much to the fans and the companies and the artists is because it means so much of relevance. So in my personal experience back when I was performing on I'm Pretty Rap Star, our song that we put out all together would just do really well on the charts. And after about a year, after the artists stopped performing on television, their songs wouldn't do so well on the charts. So that just shows how much relevance means uh, rather than the sort of music quality or like the uh, music performance. I'm not saying that your song can be bad and you can do well in the charts, no. I mean, it still has to be good songs. It still has to be good music, but relevancy is everything. So this is it for this week's K-Pop Insider. If you have any further comments or questions, leave them down below or DM me at Instagram. See you next week.